Okay, let's do uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 11. Can we do that? He say, ask, and it shall be given you. Are you still seeing that the context, the subject is prayer? Can you confirm that? All right, so he say, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and it shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. We don't have time to talk about prayer as asking. Prayer as seeking. And prayer as knocking. We don't have time for that. There, there are different rules that, that are associated with asking. If you are asking, you have to ask according to the will of God. If you are asking, it must be on the basis of faith. If you are asking, there are principles that are bound that you must subscribe to in order for your asking to be profitable. Then there is the seeking part where we go on spiritual adventures to pick up wisdom from the heart of God. Now, seeking is different from asking. And um, if you know prayer at all, seeking takes time. It takes like 11 months. Yes, seeking is not easy for anybody, even the greatest of prophets. People like asking, but they, they are not being taught how to seek. And if you are not diligent to seek, you are not going to have access to direction. And one of the things that God gives a man he wants to help is that he gives him direction. But direction, even though it is available, can only be contacted through seeking. Seeking. So when you read books of men like in M. Bounds that were chieftains in prayer, you will learn from them that if you are going to profit maximally from prayer, you need to do it for long. You are doing a seeking escapade for 11 months and this is what I want I want wisdom on this matter and you set your face for 11 months seeking will consume you now if there is bitterness in you if there is malice in you when you come to seek God you have given God the opportunity to deal with you people that ask God ask God is not afforded adequate opportunity to deal with you when you ask but when you seek you are the one that wants wisdom from him he will put you down and remind you of your bitterness you remind you of the fact that you don't pay tight and you and him will sit on tight matter for another 14 days you'll be shedding light on how you have robbed him you stole from him you have not honored him you <laughs> It takes time, it takes time. And only people, are you there? Oh yeah, seems you are not there. <laughs> it takes time. Seeking will humble you. You, you, you are so important. Then he will ignore you for three months until you discover that you are not so important. Then he will not say, oh, it's obvious you are, you are, you are doing something. I can perceive that you are making an attempt to reach me ah, after three months he will just inform you that he's beginning to see you now he's, you, he wasn't seeing you for the past two months but you are appearing now seeking will take time he affords him the opportunity to run a surgery on your heart that wicked heart of yours that stone heart you can get by with that heart if all you are doing is asking but the day you grow and you want to seek his will seek his mind you submit yourself for surgery so it takes time it's a clinical work god is going to gain and you will gain god will gain dealing with you so that you become more like him and you will gain the wisdom that you seek from god are you still with me and there is also another dimension which is knocking we don't have time for that so the bible says ask and you shall receive there is a guarantee it's a seek you will find so God gives us the guarantee first before, so that we can be encouraged to switch on the initiative. Now, let's go. Verse number 
8. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Still talking about prayer. Or what man is there? Are you still aware that we are still talking about prayer? He said, what man is there of you whom his son asks bread will give him a stone? Are you like that? Or if he asks a fish, will give him a serpent? Then Jesus concludes by saying, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him are you with me now he spoke about asking about seeking about knocking then he went forth in the same breath and said what man is there among you that his son will ask him for fish and he will give him a serpent. Obviously the answer is no. No man. And then Jesus does a contrast and a comparison. Between our own model of fatherhood. And his own model of fatherhood. Now in comparison to God's model of fatherhood. Your own good model of fatherhood is evil. The, for he said. If ye being evil. That is compared to God's model of fatherhood. Yours is evil. But the fact that you are, you are evil in your fatherhood does not stop you from giving good gifts unto your children. Now, I had to come this way just to convince every father here that your model of fatherhood by no means stands at par with God's model of fatherhood. So the fact that you are a father doesn't give you insight into the kind of father that God is. And Jesus is saying that the extent to which your prayer enterprise will prosper is the degree to which you have received a revelation of him as father. Did you get that? Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 11. Let, let us see how we can know this father. Matthew chapter 11. Are you there? Matthew 11 verse 27. It said, All things are delivered unto me of my father, and no one knoweth the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father, save the son, and him to whomsoever the son reveal him. There is only one way we can know the father is through the revelation that the son makes about his father there is only one chartered individual that has the stature the capacity to reveal the father it happens to be the son so if we are going to know the father are you still here yes. then we'll need to study the bible and find out everything that jesus said about his father and for every such revelation you secure from the bible it will advance your engagement of God as father. Do you, do you understand what we are trying to achieve now? So when we go back to the book of Matthew chapter 6 where I began to read from. We, meet, we must start with definition of terms. The first term that is introduced there is the hypocrite. Uh, in giving of arms, we have an arms hypocrite we also have a prayer hypocrite you will need to know who a prayer hypocrite is so that you are not one because a prayer hypocrite cannot get answers to prayer even though he engages prayer all night you know this is a prayer ministry so we just want to lay the foundation for 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 engagement are you still with me so it is not everybody that prays that will get results to prayer. The hypocrite is excluded from prayer. And uh, 
the definition of a hypocrite I will soon reveal. Are you there? The second definition that we need to bring to the congregation this morning is what we call vain repetitions. Vain repetitions. So we need to define what vain repetitions are. Are you there? Because according to Jesus, if you are engaging the Father and you are using the, the model of vain repetitions, you cannot engage him. It's, it's impossible for you to use that approach and reach the Father. Are you still with me? All right, come with me. Third thing that we need to define um, Pastor Blessed, when you pray, are you not expecting answers to prayer? In fact, the objective of your prayer most times is because of answers. But God's objective for you praying is not so that you can get answers. Oh, don't say anything. There is a difference between prayer answered and prayer rewarded. God wants to give you prayer rewards, but you want prayer answers. So I need to define what a prayer reward is. How many of you have read the scripture that say, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not? You, you, you did not pray because, that, because you wanted God to show you anything. You wanted your answers. So he will give you your answers. But beyond your answers, he takes you into showings. That was not what you prayed for. You were praying to get answers. God is willing and capable and he will give you answers. But beyond your answers, there is something he wants to use your prayer as an excuse to give you. And those things are captured in form of rewards. May you not stop at the realm of answers. May, may God have a way to bring you into rewards for prayer. Are you still with me? Okay, let's begin the engagement. He wants to take you beyond your answers into rewards. So you will find those kind of statements in uh, John chapter 6. And you will discover that... Um, a prayer hypocrite has no entitlement to rewards because he has received his reward already. Are you there? Okay. So let's begin this journey. Um, go with me to uh, Matthew 6 verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door. Another thing we need to define is closet. Another thing we need to define is thy door. That door belongs to you. It's not the door with which we got into this auditorium. It's your own door. It is specific to you. It's particular to you. And if you are going to be able to engage the Father, the prescription that Jesus gives is that you must go into your closet and then shut the door. Are you there? That door is yours. You must have it shut. And the, the thing Jesus is talking about here has nothing to do with the door of your bedroom is the door of your mind. You can shut your mind to influences that are around so that in the midst of a market situation, you, you can still engage God. And all the noise taking place in the arena 
has no way of entering into your space because you deliberately decided to shut the door. You can walk into a place full of naked women and not notice them if you know how to shut the door. Your heart has a door and when you gave your life to Christ, you opened the door to him. Now, you see, the door of your heart responds to your convictions and your confessions. What I am convinced about by the Holy Spirit that I decree with my mouth becomes real in the realm of the spirit. That's how you got saved. There was an interaction between your heart and your mouth that resulted in the miracle of your salvation. Are you still with me? You can shut the door because your heart, one of the definitions of your heart, it is that it, it, it is the um, entry organ. It is the organ of entry. Malice can enter your heart. Uh, uh, um, um, envy can enter your heart. Your heart is a very delicate facility and it happens to be the epicenter of God's emphasis if he wants to engage you. That's the tile mark upon which God will land if he wants to engage your life. But you see, the, the heart is vulnerable, so vulnerable to external stimuli and you will need to have the skill of shutting the door so that nothing is allowed to enter when you are engaging. How many of you have tried to pray and the moment you began to engage then you began to hear that there's yogurt in the fridge yogurt in the fridge it is strawberry 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 <laughs> i know you don't have such problems it's only me that has that, that kind of problem. <laughs> now that's an indication of the fact that the door is not shut yet you have not come into the energy level where the shutting of the door is possible it means the door is still open satan can still whisper the flesh can still whisper the door is not yet shut when you want to engage prayer satan will begin to send frequencies across to your heart because satan are you there it is possible for satan to think his thoughts through your thoughts and you are unaware you will never know what temptation is until you begin to engage prayer then you will find out how porous you are. You, you are just trying to pray. Then you remember Satan takes your mind to a time when you stole. Hallelujah. And the moment he does that, what he does is that he deflates your faith and then there is now a hole in your armor. Your greatest temptations and distractions will come when you set your heart to pray. Uh, that's why Jesus is teaching us you will need to learn the skill of closing the door now let me let me teach you how to close the door are you still with me yes. I saw my friend Douglas from Uganda where are you where's Douglas okay Douglas that's Douglas now Douglas any instruction I give you you do it okay so begin to count from 1 to 10 in your mind have you started? What's your name? Where did you stop? Hey! No. Let me go with Pastor Fred. Douglas is high in spirit, so he can't coordinate with me. Pastor Fred, count from 1 to 10 in your mind. Have you started? What's your name? Where did you stop counting? Pastor Fred stopped counting at 4. You know why? The, the, there is more authority in your speaking than in your thinking. If you want to speak, you will stop thinking. If the devil wants to interfere, are you there? If he wants to distract your prayer, he uses your thoughts. So what you do is that you begin to speak. That's how you shut the door from influences, spiritual influences that want to take advantage of your adventure. You shut the door by what? Speaking. So the moment you begin to hear yogurt in the fridge, then you take a scripture and say it to yourself and hear it. If you say it two times to yourself and you hear it, that spirit that is transmitting, his network will shut down. Jesus says shut the door because prayer is warfare. He knows that if you can engage God, 
you can tip the scales. So he doesn't want you to enjoy that adventure without interference. And so Jesus said, you need to do what? And it is your door. It is idiosyncratic to you. It is specific to you. It is particular to you. Your skill of shutting the door will determine if you can secure audience from God. The flesh is noisy. Your soul is noisy. Satan wants to beat drums in your soul. The drama of the soul. And he wants to crystallize a certain form of haste within your soul. Do you know that haste? You have time for everything. You have time for movies. You have time for gossip. But when you come into the presence of God, there seems to be a haste inside. It's an orchestration of, of Satan. And he's taking advantage of the redeem of the flesh. Because the flesh can enjoy everything except prayer. So he puts the flesh on notice. That you are about to go on an adventure. You are going to be ignored. So the flesh begins to make noise inside. It, it, it sounds like haste. And if you don't know the drill on how to shut the door, the flesh will win. Please help me tell your neighbor, shut the door. For many of us in this place, your door has been too open. And you receive vibes from every quarter. The moment you engage, you are sound when you are not praying. Your brain is balanced. You can think very constructive thoughts outside of prayer. But when you want to engage, suddenly there is a marketplace. Activities are going on. You are trying to shut it down. Uh, no. What you do is speak. And then you bring tranquility. Just like Jesus spoke. And he said, peace be still. And everything arranged and came into alignment. You have the authority to shut the door by speaking. When you do that, then you will be situated within your closet. The reason why there's a recommendation for closet dealings. Oh my, are you there? You are not there. There is a recommendation for closet dealings. is because of the nature of our father. The Bible says our, the first definition of our father is that our father is in secret. So it would take an activity that is domiciled in secret to engage the God that is in secret. You must know what it means to exercise your spirit. Exercising your spirit doesn't necessarily mean noise. If the noise you are making as prayer is not a product of the rhythm that is captured from inside, what you are doing is noise. You are not engaging because you do not know that the person you are trying to engage is in secret. You think he's in the market. Oh, you are not with me. What I'm trying to do is to recalibrate you. So that if you begin to pray right, you will, the hand of God will move everywhere. One year, your life would have changed so many times, you will not even be able to recognize yourself. One of the missing things in the body of Christ is the, is the knowledge of prayer. There's a knowledge that backs it up. If you are going to gain rank in your service delivery in terms of prayer, you need knowledge. It was not every time Jesus shouted. He shouted sometimes. But you see, the shout came from within him. He was expressing what was happening within him. Sometimes the Holy Ghost is gentle, is quiet inside. That's how your prayer should be that day. Oh my God, you are not with me. The rhythm of your outward delivery is supposed to be consistent with the rhythm of his sitting, his movement within your vessel. That means you have understood him that dwells in secret. If you don't know how to find his rhythm, there are many times you will pray and miss him. Because you don't know that he's in secret. 